The hype for FIFA 23 has officially started. EA has announced and showcased the reveal for the next game. And also they've provided quite a lot of information over on their website, which links to pitch notes and gameplay features. Our main focus for today though, is looking at the different additions and also going through how you can get them a lot cheaper than what they're listed for. But before we do get into the video, if you're looking to get some very easy coins for FIFA 22 before the final days, then there is no better place than Mule Factory. Head over there to get yourself some cheap, fast FIFA 22 coins, completely reliable. And if you use Fnatic 5 at checkout, you'll also get yourself a 5% discount. Link can be found in the description down below. Getting back into the video. The additions that we have this year is the exact same as what we've had for last year and the year before that, the year before that, and pretty much since the beginning of time. EA have a set routine which they follow pretty much to the T every single year, and that's because it works. But it does mean that players have learned the system, they understand the routine that EA go through, and they know the best way to get the best possible deal. This is exactly what we're going to be going through. So the release date, the official release date is the 30th of September. And this is if you was to buy into the standard edition. The standard edition will give you the game. It will release on the 30th of September. It will give you one team of the week player, killing Mbappe lone item for five FIFA Ultimate Team matches, foot ambassador lone player pick where you can pick between Davies, Son and Vinicius Jr. for three matches. And then you also have a career mode, homegrown talent. This is if you pre-order the game now. And depending on whether or not you're going to get this on previous gen, being PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, that's going to cost you £59.99p. Whereas if you was going to get it on next gen, it's £10 more expensive at £69.99. The Ultimate Edition gives you everything that we've just mentioned and a little bit more. You'll be able to get the FIFA World Cup Foot Heroes player item. The release date is three days earlier on the 27th of September rather than it being the 30th. You have dual entitlement, which means that you can buy the Ultimate Edition on PlayStation 4. And if you do get a PlayStation 5 throughout the year, it just crosses over. You can immediately just use the same game without having to buy FIFA again. Whereas if you got the standard edition, you would then have to buy FIFA again on PlayStation 4 and then again on PlayStation 5. You'll also be able to go and get a one to watch player item and you'll also be able to get 4,600 FIFA points. This cost in a grand total of $89.99. And these are the two additions that you can choose from if you're going to be getting FIFA 23. But now let's actually get to the point in where most people probably clicked on this video is how to get it cheaper. Because of the business model that EA have, where they're trying to make as much money from you as possible, they have subscriptions as well as one-time fees that you can go and buy into. And to make them all worth it, they provide various discounts across the board. If you're smart with this, you can use it to get things a lot cheaper. You can actually bring the Ultimate Edition down to the price of what it would be if you was going to go and buy the Standard Edition. So firstly, you can go and get an EA Play subscription. This is EA subscription service where if you do already have it, you're probably paying £3.99 per month. But if you've never had it before, you can actually get this for 79p. This will give you access to various games, early access, and also you'll get discounts within game. One discount that we're looking at in particular is you being able to get a 10% discount with FIFA 23 on your pre-order. What a lot of people do is they'll quickly buy an EA Play subscription, they'll then go and pre-order FIFA 23, and then they'll immediately cancel their subscription, giving them a 10% discount. And on top of that, they are not charged for that EA Play. They haven't completed the full month, so EA will immediately refund everything. But we can take this a step further. Instead of you adding your card to your Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Stadia, whatever it is, you can actually go and buy a gift card. You want to use a site where these gift cards are already discounted, or you can apply a discount code, which just makes them even cheaper. And you want to be able to go and buy a three times £25. That way you're able to afford what you want to afford. That all depends on the type of addition that you're looking to buy into. The discount that you get here all comes down to your knowledge. If you know a good site, you trust it, and you can get things a lot cheaper than what they're actually worth, 
then you're going to be able to save yourself even more money. Once it actually goes around to purchasing the game and also purchasing your EA Play, you're going to be using the money that you've got from those gift cards, which you already managed to go and get them cheaper than the actual price. But things don't just stop there. You can go and get that subscription to EA Play, gives you a 10% discount. You can also go and buy a gift card, which all depends on how much you're able to go and get these gift cards for and the discount that you can apply to them, but you can save money in that way. And there's a third step where you can save even more. And this will bring it down to if you did go and do all three of these, of you getting the ultimate edition down to what you can get for the standard edition, you can also go into FIFA 22 to get another discount if you bought the ultimate edition for FIFA 22. If you bought this with the standard edition, I don't think this applies. Someone will have to let me know in the comment section down below. But if you do have the Ultimate Edition, you can open up FIFA 22 on your console and select pre-order FIFA 23. And there you will be taken to the purchase FIFA 23 screen. You'll automatically get the discount from EA Play, as we mentioned earlier. And as soon as you go through this, you will also get another discount on top for being a loyal FIFA player. You just want to make sure that when you do buy this, you're buying it with those gift cards, as we just mentioned. And it should take the price of £90 for Ultimate Edition down to around about 50 to 60 And that all depends on where you get those gift cards from. Once you're all done, you can go and head into your subscriptions and cancel EA Play where you'll get a full refund. Now, if you are just going to purchase the game and want it as cheap as possible, you can actually click off this video here. That's everything done. If you want to go bigger, well, there's some extra things that you can do. If you are going to add FIFA points to the game, normally there is a transfer between FIFA 22 FIFA points. And you get a one-time option when you first load up the game on FIFA 23 for you to transfer your FIFA points. You can't transfer coins, you can't transfer players, but you do get an option to transfer the FIFA points. For a lot of people, what they tend to do is whilst they've got that EA Play subscription active, as they go and get a discounted version of the game, they also head over to the store and they go and spend quite a bit of money getting FIFA points. Now, if you're just going to be doing a one-time transaction, this really isn't worth it. You might as well just wait until FIFA 23 because the reason that people do this is to save time. On the release, you can have an EA Play subscription where you're able to have early access. You get 10 hours of the game. The date hasn't been revealed yet, but it's normally five days before the Ultimate Edition release. So the Ultimate Edition releases on September 27th, around September the 22nd, you will be able to have access to the 10 hours early access. And the second that you sign into the game, that timer is ticking down. So for those that are looking to spend hundreds of thousands of FIFA points on FIFA, they don't want to be wasting their 10 hours, which are valuable at this point, just going through and processing transactions. So they do it on FIFA 22, where they have unlimited time, stack up as many FIFA points as they want, and then they move them over to FIFA 23, which just takes a couple seconds where you have a one-time transfer. This will only affect you if you are looking to put hundreds of thousands of FIFA points on, put loads of money into this game. You're doing this is likely because you have a lot of money free and you just love this game or you're a content creator. And we did also briefly mention it there, but you can get an EA Play subscription. The EA Play subscription does give you early access. It doesn't matter what edition you buy, whether or not it's standard or the ultimate edition, you can still get to play FIFA 23 early. And it is normally 10 hours. Now with this, there's always some confusion. EA Play offers early access to FIFA 23, but it's not technically the full game. You can play all game modes, everything saves for the full release, so all the progress that you make during early access will be there and will be saved and it will carry over to the game's full release on September the 27th or September the 30th. But if you have pre-ordered one of these editions, when you first load up FIFA 23 Early Access, you will not get your pre-order bonuses. You won't get your one to watch player. You won't get your 4,600 FIFA points. There'll be no team of the week players. You won't get your Kylian Mbappe loan for five games. And you won't have an option for your foot ambassador loan player pick. This all happens once the edition that you purchase is actually released. Likewise, if you buy EA Play to try FIFA 23, and this is your first time ever playing Ultimate Team or any other FIFA for that matter, 
you won't have access to everything. You'll have access it on EA Play through the early access, but if you did try and sign out and do what everyone else is doing, where they use the web app alongside it to maximize their time, you will get a message telling you that you need to have an active account. You need to be verified and you do this by playing enough matches until EA sees you as a loyal active player. Unfortunately, the games that you play on early access do not count. You can play 100 games and it still will not give you access, not until the full release, whether that be the 27th or 30th, depending on which edition that you bought into, where you have to play those games there. And then eventually, once you play enough, you will be given access. And at that point, it's way too late to take advantage of those first couple of days before the release. This is why I tell you if you want a certain account to be verified for FIFA 23 so you have access to everything right at the beginning, you need to start now. There is a cutoff point sometime in mid-August, yeah you don't announce it, it just happens and any accounts created after that date will not get full access on the release. Not until the accounts get verified and you're seen as a loyal player. You will still be able to go and buy your EA Play subscription and get 10 hours early access, but you will not be able to go and use the likes of the web app, which is essential within those first couple of days. Now with all of this, there is a lot there. We've gone through quite a bit comparing the different editions, showing you exactly how you can get cheaper and also going through EA Play and some problems that people face. If you do have any questions about anything, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to so see ya.